I was going to talk about a shader effect today, and then I realized that that shader effect depends on a couple other things that I have yet to talk about. And since I don't like cramming more than one subject into a single video, I'm going to get that out of the way first. Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's talk about texture filtering. Texture filtering is pretty simple. This video shouldn't take too long to get the point across. Uh, what I have here is a, uh, a picture of a duckling, uh, which is the same duckling that I've been picking on for a lot of these texture image videos. And I've written a little bit of code that lets you stretch these parts out when you click, uh, so that you can see it stretched out to different uh, proportions and scales. By default, Game Maker Studio 2 will not do any texture filtering effects when you scale a sprite. Uh, when you draw it with a scale, when you draw it stretched, if you were to use it as a texture in 3D. Anytime you would draw a sprite so that each of the pixels in the image doesn't correspond with one pixel on the screen, by default, Game Maker will just make each of the individual pixels bigger by the appropriate amount, and it won't do any blurring effects uh, to make them blend together in any way, shape, or form. Given that people generally use Game Maker to make pixel art games, this is usually what you want. This is usually true when you're making 2D games, as well as even most of the time when you're making a 3D game in Game Maker, if you're going for a pixel art aesthetic, you generally don't want any blurring to happen. But if you did, uh, in case you did, you have the ability to turn texture interpolation on. By default in Game Maker Studio 2, this is going to be off. There are a few texture interpolation, texture filtering options that exist. There are a few different algorithms for it. If you were to open up a modern version of Adobe Photoshop, for example, you might see the option to use uh, linear or bilinear or bicubic or this other texture filtering algorithm that I cannot pronounce with my actual real life set of teeth and tongue and vocal cords. Anyway, each of these texture filtering algorithms will produce slightly different results. Game Maker, in its quest to be reasonably simple for the end user and to perform these effects in real time, only has two options, that being no texture filtering at all, which is when the pixels just get bigger with no blurring whatsoever, hey. and linear. If you want to see what this looks like, if you go into the window settings, if you go into the graphics tab, uh, this, will, this will work with the Windows settings or Ubuntu or Mac OS or any other target platform that you might be trying to make a game for and you check the interpolate colors between pixels box, this will affect the default texture interpolation mode. And now when I click to scale up the stuck sprite, you will see that things get rather blurry. When I make it bigger, when I make it smaller, when I make it go in like upside down and backwards. Um, normally when you're making pixel art games, like I said, this is in no way, shape or form what you are looking for. This is definitely not something that you want to have. It has its uses when you're trying to do specific effects. Like I said at the beginning of this video, there is one particular shader effect which I will be making a video on shortly, which um, makes use of this, of this practice of blurring textures when you scale them up. So you can also apply this effect through code, as you can imagine. So if I were to turn this off in game settings, if I were to go to, go to uh, Windows Graphics Allow Interpolation Between Pixels and turn that off, I can set this through code. So for example, if I were to say, uh, if keyboard check pressed. Uh, let's go with the shift key. If you hit the shift key, uh, you can say GPU set text filter, and you can set that to true to enable linear texture filtering. And if I were to uh, want to turn it off, I could say if keyboard check pressed, let's go with another key on the keyboard. Let's hit the space bar, and then we can turn the texture uh, interpolation off so that we are not using linear texture interpolation anymore. And this will allow us to switch between modes on the fly whenever I hit a key on the keyboard. So I'm going to hit shift and we're going to be blurry and I'm going to hit space and we're going to be sharp again. Uh, you can use this in between drawing things. So you can have some objects be drawn with texture interpolation turned off and others with it turned on. If I were to draw, let's say another copy of this, uh, of this duckling sprite over instead of at the original position, let's say X plus like 500 or so. And then just turn the effect off. Oops, turn the effect off when we're done. Uh, I now have the ability to scale you up. Uh, right now, the one on the right is not drawn with texture interpolation. I can hit the shift key and you are not staying there because this is only detecting uh, keyboard check pressed and not keyboard check continuously held, which is just what the keyboard check function is for. Uh, like this, you can see that we are being drawn with a uh, with different sprites using different texture interpolation modes. 
If you happen to still be using Game Maker Studio 1, uh, this function had a different name in Game Maker Studio 1, as a number of the uh, graphic settings functions often did back then. I believe, but I don't remember offhand, and I don't have Game Maker Studio 1 installed at the current moment. I at least I don't think so. I might still have it installed through Steam. Uh, the function would have been draw set, I believe, texture interpolation would have been the function name. I'll have the actual function name of what it was in the past on screen right now. Texture filtering and texture interpolation basically refer to the same thing. Some people just call them different different words. It's kind of one of those situations in computers that are just like, what are standards? It's a bit annoying to be honest, and it can kind of occasionally cause confusion when you uh, talk to different people who are used to different terminology. Anyway, one more thing about this. Text filter. Uh, you may notice that there is a second function called GPU set text filter extended. If you happen to be drawing using a shader which accepts multiple texture samplers, you may once in a while wish to turn off texture interpolation, texture filtering, whatever, on or off for individual samplers without affecting all of them. And for that, you can use the GPU set text filter extended function. Uh, this will allow you to supply a sampler ID obtained with shader get sampler, shader get sampler index. And, uh, and just the true or false value, whether or not you want it turned on. This is not something that you will want to do often, but if you do, uh, you may want to know that the ability is there, that the ability to do so is there. And that's it. This section of code here isn't doing anything, so I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to get rid of it. This is a shorter video. Like I said, most of the time when you're using Game Maker, you'll probably want this turned off because if you're using pixel art, pixel art is gonna look really bad when it's scaled up. But all the same, it's useful to know what this uh, what this little feature is. If I'm being honest, it is something that people occasionally do by accident. It is something that people occasionally turn on by accident and then don't know how, and then they have to try and figure out why all of their uh, why all of their sprites are blurry all of a sudden. And if that happens to you, or if you're working with someone else who has this happening to them and they're trying to figure out why, now you know. Also, one more thing to note, I suppose, is that if you create a font. Uh, there will be an option in the fonts properties called anti-aliasing. I am going to make this bigger. Let's make this like 40, a size of 40 instead. Uh, there is a setting in fonts which comes to anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing in fonts are similar in that it affects how sharp the edges of the characters are drawn. But Game Maker and game engines that are trying to render text in real time in general, they handle fonts in slightly different ways than things like word processors would. And that is a rabbit hole that I am not going to be going down today. So for now, I just want to acknowledge that yes, this uh, this little anti-aliasing option in fonts exists. Okay, that's it. I am going to probably be posting one more video today on a similar texture option, which is also going to be relevant to, I suppose, next week's video. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I hope you found that useful. Uh, if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there's a Patreon link to, to, to a Patreon page thing. I completely lost that one. I usually stumble at least a little bit on the self-promotion line in these videos, but I just completely lost that one. Look in the video description or something. Otherwise, I try to post two or three of these videos a week, split somewhere between tutorial tutorials and let's make a tower defense game from start to finish in Game Maker in 3D. For now, I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Jason, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.